Baseball is a game of repetition. And Pierzynski lifts one up. You really have to put in some time in order to get to where you want to get to. You just have to want it. Now the 21-year-old kid, A.J. Pierzynski. I came in in like the seventh inning. And A.J. Pierzynski in his first major league at bat. My heart felt like it was going to jump out of my throat. You look around, there's 40,000 people in the stands. I'm going to play in a major league game that I've watched on TV for my whole life. You're like, am I going to make it through this? Until you get to that point, you just don't know what to expect. Brzezinski gunned him out. Ever since I was a little kid, that's kind of all I wanted to do, um, is play baseball. I remember when I was like five, maybe six years old. This was before uh, all the TV stuff or the highlights and all that. I would wake up in the morning and check the box score in the newspaper. I used to keep a book of every score of every game. People we lived next door to when I was growing up, the Mulhans. Uh, I remember playing with Brett and Scott forever. We were like brothers. One of the boys was older, Scott, and so he was always better than us. So me and his younger brother, Brett, would have to kind of team up on him. And I remember hitting Brett with a bat in the, in the stomach and him crying forever and me getting in trouble. There was always something about baseball that we always liked to do, we always played, and we always had fun with it. There was a couple times where I had to make some phone calls to some other parents and some kids for uh, getting a little bit out of line on the field. I remember one time, I was probably 12 years old. The other team, we were, I was on the Rotary, the Sunbank team was a good team. We needed them to lose a game, and our whole team went, and we were kind of cheering against them. And I remember I had to make a phone call to the parents and apologize for cheering against their sons. I'm sorry about what I said. I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable. I didn't mean it. We were just trying to root for our team. You know, meanwhile, you have your mother your, in your ear telling you what to say. My mom, she always took me to every game. She always found a way to get me to everything. You know, I wasn't privileged. I wasn't any of that. We just got by. The first team I remember being on was called Henry's Vacuum and Sewing. I remember playing shortstop one time, and our catcher didn't show up. And I was like, why not? I'll try it. You get all the cool gear, you get to carry around way more stuff than anybody else. Helmet, mask, a glove that looks different. I just went back there, and I was like, man, this is awesome. You're involved in every pitch. You don't have to worry about chasing balls. Everyone's looking at you, and it never got boring. From the moment I put the gear on, it just stuck. This is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. I never played another position. I was always catching. I remember a game when I was 12 years old. Uh, we were playing for the championship. And two days before, I had gone over to my friend's house, and we were on a trampoline. And I hit my face on the uh, bar. And I had to get stitches in my lip, and I couldn't catch, because I couldn't put the mask on, because my lip had stitches on it. So I had to play first base. And the other team, I still hate them for this, too. They bunted every time, and I had to play first base. And our catcher wasn't good. Like, he couldn't get the ball. And then they'd steal bases, and I was just so mad. When you're that old, you don't understand it at the time that they were doing everything in their power to, to win. If you got to lay down a bun or if you got to steal a base or whatever you got to do, they were doing it. And I, at the time, I didn't understand that. You have to do whatever you can do to win. After my freshman year of high school, I picked Dr. Phillips High School because my friends, the Mulhans, went to Dr. Phillips. And at the time, Dr. Phillips had Johnny Damon, the best high school player in the country that year. It was more of a baseball factory. Played JV my sophomore year, and that was the year Johnny Damon was a senior. He was the man. 
He was definitely the man back in the day. His first game as a senior in high school, now batting the number one high school prospect in the country, you know, and that's like from that moment on, you're like, whoa, there's all these guys with radar guns and scouts and, you know, 15-year-old kid being like, wow, look at this, this guy, this guy must be something special. Kind of changed the way I thought about it because then I was like, wow, I want to be that guy. I want to be the guy that everyone's coming to watch. You're like, wow, this is pretty cool. This is what it can become. Baseball is a game of repetition. You really have to put in some time because there's so many small things that can make a big difference in this game that you have to put in the time in order to get to where you want to get to. You just have to want it. Going into my junior year in high school, I was probably going to be on JV again because we had a senior catcher. I remember that fall, uh, another friend of mine in high school, we would go to my backyard and we would do like plyometrics and stuff just because we wanted to be on the varsity so bad. We'd run and do all these extra stuff and then we'd hit. And I remember I hit so much that my high school coach had to put lights in the cage and had to give me a key because I'd go up there and hit after dark or after practice, even when there was no practice and I'd just hit and hit and hit and hit. Swing after swing after swing until couldn't swing anymore. And after that, I actually got to play varsity. My first game as a junior on varsity, we were playing in the Lake Brantley Big Blue Bonanza Tournament. And I had just turned 16. And I'm so excited because I'm going to start the first game in varsity as a junior. And I'm just like, oh, this is high school baseball. This is what it's all about. There was a lot of scouts and there was a lot of people because it was a big deal. I remember Danny coming up to me and saying, hey, a couple people were talking to me after the game about you. There were some college coaches there and some scouts there and, and they wanted to know about you. It was nice to hear that they actually noticed you instead of always noticing other people. So that was kind of the first time where I was like, oh, wow, there, I'm, I might actually be halfway decent at doing what I'm doing here. And uh, all this work is starting to pay off a little bit. When I got to my senior year, I was kind of, and it sounds so bad to say, but I was kind of like the big deal around here because of attention and national attention and all that stuff on you. There was always a target on me, a little bit, kind of like when Johnny was a senior, kind of the same thing. But Johnny, I think, handled it a little differently because he's a, a little bit nicer, I would say my senior year. I was in a rundown between third and home, and, uh, and he had stepped up in the rundown. I just trucked him and ran him over, and we were on their side, and their whole bench came out. If you put me in a game where there's some competition, yeah, you'll see it ramp up a little bit. Oh, I'm always, let's go, let's fight, and we'll do whatever it takes. Krasinski's in with a triple. I just will never back down. A.J. Krasinski gunned him out, but a good throw from A.J. Play your senior year, it's over. You're hearing from all these teams, and you're like, okay, who's gonna draft me? This team's told me they're gonna draft me. This team's told me they're gonna draft me. And then draft day comes, and you're like, nervous. You know, the, this team said they're gonna take you in the first round, and you're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna be a first round pick, and you're like, oh, oh. And then the draft starts. This before it was televised, this before the internet. You're just sitting there and you're like, okay, the draft started at one o'clock on like a Tuesday afternoon. It's 1.30 now and I haven't heard from anybody. So then finally, I don't know, say two o'clock phone rings. Yeah, this is Brad Weitzel from the Twins. Just wanna say, we just drafted you in the third round. And I was like, oh, that's great. Hang up and I was like, my parents were like, well, who was it? You know, And I'm like, oh, the Twins, third round. They're like, oh, that's great. And I'm like, Twins? like. Man, I hated the Twins in 91 when they beat the Braves in the World Series. Like, I don't want to play for the Twins. They made me an offer. Went and signed probably the next day, and I think a day later, I had to report to the Gulf Coast League Twins in Fort Myers, Florida. How was that? That sucked.
you want to find out if you like baseball or not, I challenge anybody, go spend the entire season like I did in the Gulf Coast League in Fort Myers, Florida. And if you make it through that, then you like baseball. I drove up and I pull into this parking lot and it wasn't even like a stadium, it was just like a high school field. Like I played in a nicer high school field than uh, this minor league park I just pulled into and there was just this thing that said, welcome to the show. And it was like the major league band. I'm like, man, this is the show. Like I'm missing something somewhere. You're on your own. You're just another number. Get there at seven in the morning, do drills, work out, and you get a six inch subway. We used to get a six inch subway sub for lunch every day. And that was the only food we were provided for the whole day. You go play one o'clock games in front of two people, literally two people, whoever's parents were in town. There would be like one or two games a year that were on like local TV. You're like, man, this is this is cool. I'm on TV. Like someone can actually watch this game. Not that they were going to. It was eye opening, and it was it was like, whoa, this is this is the real world stuff right here. My first full season when I was in Fort Wayne, 95, I think I played probably 40 games there and I made like 20 errors. I threw like 20 balls in the center field. I mean, it was like every game I was throwing one away. It just killed me. Then I got sick. I remember we were in Appleton, Wisconsin and I, my throat, I couldn't even swallow and I went in and I, my throat, I couldn't even swallow and I went in the park and my, like my lymph node under my, was like, I mean, it looked like I had a baseball in there. My, Manager at the time, Dan Rohn's like, you got mono, man. You got to go home, like, right away. So I come home, parents' house. It's about six weeks passed, and there, and so I get all clear from the doctor. And the twins are like, all right, well, we're not going to send you back to Fort Wayne. You missed too much, so Elizabeth is getting ready to start their season. We're going to send you back there. And I was like, oh, what? When I got to Elizabeth, and uh, I remember I had to be at the park every day at 2 o'clock with our manager at the time, John Russell, who's now the bench coach for the Orioles. And we would literally would throw a baseball. Like, he had to teach me how to throw. Like, it sounds dumb. Like, you're like, oh, you're drafted. You're in the minor leagues. You know how to throw. But he literally taught me how to re-throw a baseball. This game's hard, and it humbles you. And that was one of the most humbling experiences of all time. Sometimes you got to pick yourself up. One of my best friends growing up, Scott Mulhan, uh, he had cancer. I mean, he started his king cancer, spread all over. I remember going and seeing him right before he passed away, and it was, like, hard. I mean, in their living room, and he's on the couch, like, ready to go. I mean, it was like, this is, this is the worst thing I've ever been through. He wanted nothing more than to see one of us succeed, one of the three of us, whether it was me, himself, or his brother, Brett. It definitely gives you motivation to get better. I want to do this for not only myself, but also for him. I had to make it. Played the full season in the Appalachian League. Played a full year in the Fort Wayne, which is the Midwest League. In 97, I was promoted to the Fort Myers Miracle, which is the Florida State League. Played a full season there. 1998, I started the season in Eastern League, which is New Britain, Connecticut. Then got promoted in about June to Salt Lake City, which is the Pacific Coast League, which is AAA. Every day it was about how can I make myself better to get to the big leagues. Deep to right field. One of the famous quotes in baseball, if you don't like it, play better. That's a home run. If you're an A-ball and you don't like your A-ball team, well, play better, you get moved to double A. The runner goes, Pazinski with a throw from behind the plate, and he's got him. Oh, I'm not playing enough? Well, play better and you'll get to play more. That's just kind of the way baseball works. And that's going to go deep to right field. Pazinski with another home run. If you're playing well, then everything else will take care of itself. Just play better. Pazinski picking the runner off the first. What a play. The journey in the minor leagues is the best of times, the worst of times, because you hate it because you're in the minor leagues and you want to be up, but you also love it because you're playing baseball, and I can get closer to my dream, which is to play in the major leagues.
You have to understand the journey, and you have to appreciate the journey to get there. There's always memories you look back on, and you say, man, this was pretty awesome. And I remember when I got called up, you get called into the manager's office. Everyone kind of gets called in to discuss where they're at in the organization. He called me in. There was a couple other guys in there. He's like, all right, I just want you guys to know you guys should be real proud of yourself. You're going to Minnesota for September. And I was like, wait, I'm going to the big leagues? And I was 21 years old at the time. And I was like, wait, I'm, I'm going to, to, to the real big leagues here? Your heart's pounding a million miles an hour. You can't wait to get on the phone to make a call to your parents and be like, I'm going to the show, Mom. Like, this is it. Like, I made it. It's just a feeling of all the work you've put in over all the years that you just, in that one moment, you're like, OK, I made it. You show up to the field, walk into the big league stadium, and you don't go in the gate. You kind of go in the back entrance through security and everything, and it's pretty cool to be like, I'm not one of the regular people anymore. I'm actually the one all these 50,000 people are looking at. And I just remember my heart, I felt like it was going to jump out of my throat. I mean, it was like, <laughs> felt like everyone could see my chest like beating. Welcome back, bottom of the fifth here at the Big A. And it looks like the Twins are going to be making some defensive changes. They're like, you're going in to catch next inning. Whoa, God. Yeah, I didn't even have to get loose. I just like ran on the field. And I remember between innings, I threw my first throw. Like, I mean, I threw it like 40 feet over the second baseman's head to second. And we got out of the inning, and I came in, and Ron Gardenhire at the time was a third base coach. And he looks at me, he's like, nice throw. And I was like, ah, oh, I know you saw that. He's like, everybody saw that. And I'm like, oh, man, I feel so bad. But I didn't care. I mean, I was on cloud nine. I was flying. For my first at bat came that inning. And I remember David Ortiz was on the team. We had played together in the minor leagues. And he was, I think he was hitting before me, so we were kind of standing on deck together. And he's like, he looks at me, you know, David as being Dave, and he's like, ah, I hope you strike out. And I'm like, screw you, David. Now the 21-year-old kid, AJ Kurzinski. You look around, there's 40,000 people in the stands, and you know, you just you're like, okay, what's gonna happen? Like, how am I gonna be able to, am I gonna make it through this? And you know, there's this guy, because he's in the big leagues, have something I've never seen before, and and you just don't. Until you get to that point, you just don't know what to expect. And I was just thinking, just don't strike out. Whatever you do, like, I don't care if I hit a 12 hopper to the pitcher and get jammed and blow up my bat. I was like, just don't strike out. Ground ball, second base, and A.J. Krasinski in his first major league at bat, grounds out. I hit a ground ball to second. I was so happy. And I'm like, I can make contact in the big leagues. I've done it now. I know what it takes to do this and you just relax. Once you get called up for the first time, you think you got it made. Man, no one gets sent backwards after being in the big leagues. I'm going down. I need to figure a way to get better, and it kind of goes back to just play better and find a way to make yourself a better, a better player. I worked really hard, and then I got called up in August. We were in Seattle. Brzezinski, left-handed batter, the pitch on the way, swung on, fly ball hit to deep center, and I mean deep center. Back goes Cameron to the track, the wall, makes the leap, and it's over the center field fence. I hit my first big league home run. And I remember running around the bases just thinking to myself, like, this is it. Like, this is what it's all about. Like, I hit my first big league home run. I can never take that away from me as long as I live. If I don't ever hit another one, I can always say I hit one home run in the big leagues. And, and, and touching home plate and coming in the dugout and having the, everyone congratulate you is, like, one of the best moments you can ever have. You know, you think about all the people that have helped you along the way, and you're like, you wish all of them could be there. We wish you could have a stadium, 50,000 people full of people that you know that have helped you, even though they don't even know that they helped you. You could buy the whole stadium out and be like, hey, every person that's ever had an effect on me in my life, come and watch this game.
This will be my 18th year now in Major League Baseball. It's still there. I still want to win every game. Sometimes you have to appreciate the struggle. Look, a slow turn towards Mike. Wait for my mark, though. We'll do it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a one-take guy normally. I don't know what's going on here.